Who here knows what is data mesh? A few people? Yeah. Hopefully after this talk, more people will be able to say, yes, I know a little bit what is data mesh. But what is data mesh not? Well, data mesh is not a silver bullet. It's not something you can buy or transform overnight. Data mesh is not something one team can implement alone. And data mesh is not the successor of data warehouse or data lake. And data mesh is not a one size fits all solution. But what is data mesh? That is what I'll talk about today. Imagine you're in a fancy restaurant and you order your favorite dish. But when the food arrives, the chef just dumps a big grocery bag onto your table with raw vegetables, raw meat, uncooked pasta, a chicken that is still alive, <laughs> flying. <laughs> and he says, bon appetit, good luck. Well, that is what dealing with da messy data feels like in many organizations today. All the ingredients are there, but good luck on making sense of it. Now, imagine the same restaurant, but this time, when the food arrives, it's perfectly plated, well organized, and ready for you to dig in. No mess, no fuss, just delicious food. That is what data mesh is all about. Having everything in order, ready for you to savor. So today we're going to talk about how to turn your data disaster into a data delight. <laughs> where everything is neatly organized and ready for you to dig in. So let's get cooking. My name is Lotte Johansen. I, I work at Fin.no where I've been for 16 years now. First as a Java developer for many years and then four years as a, an engineering manager. And last year Fin has uh, started going Nordic so we collaborate with other Nordic marketplaces, like uh, Blocket in Sweden and Torre in Finland and DBA in Denmark, for example. So we're Shipstead Marketplaces, soon to have a new name. And um, so we are now serving many million people in the world and we're building our new platform on the Fin platform. So today I'll walk you through what is Data Mesh and what we've done so far in Finn and Shipstead Marketplaces, and what you can do if you want to uh, start working on Data Mesh. So we have Data Mesh versus Data Mess, and we have the four principles. So today's situation is, for many organizations, a data mess. That is where you have uh, not, the, not, the data are not published, they're not discoverable, they're not available. They might be there, but they're not available to people. And it's complex and it's incomplete and hard to understand and hard to use. Whereas the goal is the data mesh, where we have data products that are complete, they are discoverable, and they are available to those who need them, and uh, they are s served from a self-served platform. So then it's easy to share and use data amongst different teams. I'll walk you through the four principles of data mesh, the domain ownership, data as a product, self-served data platform, and a federated governance. The first principle is the domain ownership, and it means that you decentralize the ownership of data towards the teams in the domains that are the experts on their own domains. So away from one central team to be able to scale the usage of the data. And then also avoid the bottlenecks. So if you have this restaurant, you imagine that you have different teams. One is experts on uh, the, the pre-record, <laughs> the, the, oh, now the, Appetizers is a word, thank you. Um, <laughs> and then you have one team that is experts on the main courses, and you have one team that is experts on the desserts. So these teams 
They are their experts on their own domains and they can make delicious food every time in a good way for all the teams, for, all the, for, for the whole restaurant. So this is what we want also in, in Data Mesh, that the teams, in the domains, they are the expert on their own data. So they should be the owners also on how to, to serve the data towards the rest of the organization. And the second principle is data as a product. So here we put product thinking onto analytical data. So the consumers, they are outside the domain. So the team that produces these data products, they should think of it as a public API towards the rest of the organization so that the data product is served in, a, in an interesting way and how an understandable way. So it means that you need to curate and document and make your data available. So if you have your, if you think of the restaurant again, this, the food is served in a nice way and it's easy to understand what you eat <laughs> and it's, you don't need to get the whole plate of everything. It could be a part of it, for example, like uh, the sauce could be one product also, uh, but you have everything prepared in a well, in a good way. And then a third principle is a self-serve data platform. And here you have the platform thinking and put it onto the data infrastructure. So if you have a dedicated platform team and they can provide tools and functionality and systems to, to be able to build and execute and uh, maintain the data and let them work together. So with this platform, it's possible for the teams to consume and create data products. So in imagine in this restaurant, instead of waiting for a waiter to serve you the food, you have a, a buffet, like this AI-generated buffet, <laughs> where you, it's perfectly labeled, everything is well organized, and you can see what you can you can serve yourself what you want and when you want it. So this will empower the teams to, uh, to get what they need when they want it. And then the fourth principle is a federated governance, because we want some overall guidelines to be, to be followed, like some access and control, and some also some guidelines on how the data products should work together. And for example, the GDPR, that's also something overall that we should all follow, some industrial guidelines and also some, some from the society. So in this restaurant, we have a head chef that overlooks the whole, uh, the whole uh, restaurant, that everything goes according to the general rules. And still the teams can, can uh, perform within their own domains and they can be their experts, but they follow all the same, same guidelines on hygiene, for example. So these are the four principles. It's if you know them, then you actually know what is data mesh. So you have the domain ownership, where you move the ownership towards the, the domain teams instead of having a central team. And you have data as a product, where you serve the product, the data, in a well, in a well way that everyone wants to dig in, and you have a self-serve data platform so that the teams can use and create data products the, when they want it and what they want, and you have some federated governance to assure that everyone follows some guidelines. So we need those for to having a data mesh. But what have we done so far? As I said. In the beginning, it's not something you can do overnight. This is something that will take time. And we're still in the early phases of it in Finn and the ships marketplaces today. But I'll show you what we've done so far. <coughs> so this is the architecture of what my team has been doing for the last year. Um, so I'll try to explain in an easy way. So at the top here, you have team A and team B. That's not our team, but there are other teams in the organization. They have their own GitHub repositories where they have their own, they create their own 
Kafka topics, for example. And then they use a GitHub action towards our, the day is a data enablement and infrastructure team, which is my team. Uh, so the data, the GitHub actions go towards our GitHub repository and do some checks on if this is working. And then it translates and creates new GitHub actions and creates the um, <coughs> Kafka topics towards a confluent uh, where we store our Kafka topics. And then the different teams can use their use Kafka to, to collaborate. And then from there we can also create data products uh, and store them in a separate way and also to, to get the business data like metadata like owner and type and description and so on and get this out towards uh, uh, the and combine it with the data product and then show it in backstage which is a way you can show, you can sh use many, I'll come back to that. So for, um, for um, data mesh, you have the domain teams that are responsible of their own data. And you have the self serve data platform. The teams have the code in their own repositories, but they use our platform to generate the Kafka into Confluent and also the data products. And then you can create the data products and move them to a data catalog. So this is our, uh, what we've done so far, but we're still in the beginning, so we're not, maybe some here, I'll talk to you later if you've come further on this. And we use Kafka, that's because uh, Finn <laughs> used Kafka for many years, so we continue using that, it's a tool that help different parts of the system to talk together uh, by moving data between different apps. And for data mesh, the Kafka is the accessibility or availability part, because we need available data. But we could have used also others. And now in Finn, we had uh, self-managed Kafka, but now we're using managed Kafka because we're going Nordic and bigger and to be able to have some access and control and uh, scale better using Confluent. And then we have, for data mesh, it's the data catalog, which is for the discoverability part, to be able to discover what data is out there, like a menu for the restaurant. And we have tested some different types of data catalogs. We have tested Data Hub, Open Metadata, and Confluent Cloud, the portal there, and the backstage. Uh, and for now, the Confluent Cloud comes out of the box with a data catalog, but that's only for Kafka. So when we start using data products that are not Kafka, then we need to use one of the others. And Backstage is also the one I'll, I'll show you today, where we have our documentation. But you can use many others. There are lots up there. So we've started barely using uh, data products now. Uh, and then we have defined a schema that the teams need to fill out, where they fill out the name and the type and some description and some other metadata. So here's an example, only tested that though. Um, so this data product is called search query. Uh, and then they add the owner and they have some description. And then they run so they add this file on their own repository, but then they run the GitHub action towards our uh, self serve data platform. And then we serve this out to, to uh, Backstage and show the data product there. So then this is what they see now if they add this data product in addition to the Kafka co topic. I'll also show you a little bit how it looks in the Confluent for Kafka. We have a data portal there that comes out of the box. So here you can have your own, um, you can add some metadata. So here we added some teams and areas and we have descriptions of different Kafka topics. And then we can go into one topic and look at it and look at the schema and see the owners and when it was created and so on. And then we can look at the lineage, which is the collaboration between the producers and the consumers of the data. So you have the Kafka topic in the middle and you see 
who is producing it and who is uh, consuming it. And when we started, people said, this is, look, this is just a mess. It doesn't work, because this is what they saw. Uh, <laughs> but that's because uh, some teams didn't use their own names for the producers, so they had just used producer one, producer two, and then Confluent was not able to distinguish between those different producer names, so they just merged all of them together. But if you have a separate name, then it will look like this, and it's a, it's a good way to be able to, to see who are using your data, for example. And we can also search for data. So here I search for add, and then I get some schemas and uh, tags and uh, some topics with that in it. But have we had any hurdles? Yes. <laughs> I talked to some people in the organization, and they said, well, this work is maybe 30% technical challenge and 70% organizational challenge. Because it's a shift going from a central data team where they know everything and go to where the teams are the domain experts and they should create their own data products. So getting the teams to, to have this responsibility is, is quite a shift and it's not that easy. But I hope, I think we're on the right track and I think we'll get there. So if you want to uh, start working on data mesh, uh, I would suggest you to start on the domain ownership if you don't have it already. If you don't have domain teams, that's where you should start. And then you can add metadata to what is, what is out there in the data. So you add owners, you add descriptions, and then you can add more and more, and then it should uh, be easier to create data products afterwards. And you need some governance to see who, is who can access these data, who can access what, and who should be able to do what. And then you can start creating data products, so having some, some teams. So smart start small with one or two teams creating their data products, and then go from there. And then you can show this in a data catalog. But take one step at a time. So we started with a chef that thought grocery bag was fine dining. And we ended up with a masterpiece where everything is self-served buffet. And the secret is knowing how to prepare, how to organize, and how to serve exactly what is needed for the rest of the organization. So just like data mesh. So imagine now going back to your team saying, hey, we're not in the grocery bag business anymore. We're here to serve up some five star in a buffet. So now it's your turn to go back and turn raw messy data into something that everyone wants to dig into. So let's swap those grocery bags with some gourmet meals and start serving up some five star data driven success. Thank you. Thank you.